Hey everyone, this is Darla Kirchner. How are you today? We are very excited to have our collaboration show. Kate and I are on the are, are in the house today. Um, both uh, Emily and Africa actually had scary things happen today, so um, they won't be joining us. They might try to pop in if they can, um, but um, today we're talking about things that scare you in your business. Whether you're achieving, are you afraid of success? Are you afraid of failure? And we're going to keep this really light and airy because um, it is you know. It's talking about some scary things right Kate <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely this is I think this is the scariest topic that we've uh, we talked about so <laughs> yeah I know so so thanks everybody for joining us Kate and I are gonna try to man the comments and and keep the conversation going we want to make sure that we're answering your questions and we'd really appreciate it if you would tell a little bird if you'd share it with your friends and family, your friends on you know on, on Twitter, we'd really appreciate that. Um, so my name is Darla Kirchner, and I'm a brand strategist. I love to work with online entrepreneurs and small businesses to help them grow, help them grow their presence, primarily online, so that they are talking to their ideal clients, they're sharing their purpose, their mission, and um, they're being doing it all consistently um, in their business. So that's a little bit about me. And then Miss Kate, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, and then we'll get started. Hi, I am Kate Barrett. I'm the founder of Shine and Light Media and the Email Marketing Academy. And I help amazing retail entrepreneurs and slightly larger businesses really save time and make the most of their email marketing efforts. So I really sort of generate a lot of revenue using this amazing marketing channel. So that's me and hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thanks. Thanks for sharing, Miss Glenda. We really appreciate it. So Glenda is new here, and Glenda's got a little scary story too to share that maybe she might hop in. She might hop in. Maybe we can coax her in here. Um, <laughs> she's got an awesome story, and actually, we're going to be talking about that on Monday too, um, about her experience about being afraid of even being of being live, being in front of video. And Kate, you and I understand we didn't start out this way. <laughs> this takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you've just got to just got to do it, haven't you? You've just yeah. got to kind of feel yeah. the fear and do it anyway and Absolutely. just give it a go. And, you know, look, what's the worst that can happen? Right. Well, I think we exactly. build things up in our heads a lot. I think that's the biggest thing. And maybe that's something we'll talk about, Darla. But, you know, a lot of this is in our heads, um, but it can be scary. But we've just got to feel it, acknowledge it and then just do it anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's, that's the thing is about it is that, you know, it's, 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 it's constantly, I think it's about life and business. It's constantly stepping outside your, your comfort zone, right? Constantly just pushing the boundaries and going a little bit further and a little bit further. So, so yeah, so I'm going to share um, um, some stories. If you guys have any questions, if you just put the backslash with the letter Q, um, then that'll pop up for us to let it know it's a question. And I think I can come over here. I'm going to see if this works. Supposedly there's a new toy tool that on the other side of the screen below where you can tweet it out, it'll show up your, um, your questions. I'm not seeing that yet. So if somebody has a question, they want to pop it in there, we'll test it out and see if it works. We may have to open a seat for that too. I've heard that works too, but they're constantly changing things on Blab. So that might be part of it. Hey, Miss M, come on in. Oh, we're so glad you're here. Come on in, baby. If you've got time, you come on in, sweetie. Yay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much. I haven't had a chance to even share the story. I was just telling everybody that you know Emily had a challenge. And she got a scary story, and then Africa called me right after you did, Em, and she had a very scary story happen too. So you share yours. Okay. So I can only be on for a few minutes. I messaged Darla a couple of hours ago, and um, my sister who is 30 years old and started her business in 2007. She's a pet stylist. And so she has a, um, a business called pause and reflect pet salon. She has seven or eight employees that work for her and she's down four employees this morning. And so she sent me a text saying she has one that has been in and out of the hospital all week, one that's sick, um, somebody else who is a no show. Um, and so she texts me this morning and she's like, I will pay you really well to come in and help me today. And I'm like, you don't have to do that, but I get it right. I I've owned lots of businesses that were a brick and mortar. So it's a little different than what we are all trying to create with the laptop lifestyle. Right. And be able to right. work from anywhere. 
And so um, they have 41 dogs that they're going to groom today, and mm-hmm. she's down four people. So mm-hmm. I am sitting in the parking lot, actually, ready to go in. And um, I, I told her, I'm not, I don't want to wash any dogs. Like, not that I'm like this prima donna or anything like that, but I spent, I did my time in the pet industry. I had four businesses in the pet industry, and I hated it. <laughs> so uh, I am going to take care of the people because I love the people, but I don't want to wash any dogs. So when I walked in there, she was like, you're wearing a really nice shirt. And I said, well, actually not. But uh, so anyway, the the fear of being a business owner and, and um, you know, if you have employees that you can't always count on them, it's not the same for them as it is for you. And, and <laughs> so, um, yeah, so sometimes you have to, you know, call in the the uh, old recruits and try to get you know some extra, yeah. a little extra help. So absolutely love it, and it's true. Like Linda's just saying, this is a real life story, and this is true. And that's the thing about businesses. I mean, and in life, I mean, sometimes bad things, tragic things happen, scary things happen, and you have to know that you have a you have those people that you can fall back on, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes I, I think sometimes, too, especially like I'll, I'll use my sister as a great example because she's young and she's done a really, really great job of, of growing and building her business, you know, on her own for the most part. Um, but I think sometimes we can make it bigger than it is. Right. So there are more solutions than calling your sister. Right. And if I couldn't come, if I had clients and I had to do things lucky for her, I was going to take the day off. Like after I finished this blab, I was going to take the day off and not do anything. I was actually going to drive two hours from here and just spend the day by myself. So it is impacting me a little bit, but I've been in her space and I know what it's like to, to not have somebody who can help you. So I think sometimes we don't look for, you know, if, if this wasn't something that I was able to help her do, there are other solutions. And we get really, really wrapped up in the chaos in the moment. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to take a step back and to think, okay, what else could I do? Is it really the worst case scenario that I would have to reschedule some of these people for next week? Is it really worst case scenario? You know, I mean, there's other things that we can do and it doesn't have to be cardiac. But I see a lot of it when I work with business owners, they just get into a frenzy and it becomes this whole entire thing thing and then on top of being absolutely Kate and on top of being stressed out themselves now you stressed out the rest of the people who are here ready to bust their ass for you right exactly. and that's not good either yeah. the other mm-hmm. thing the other thing it, it, it affects the, the customers coming in they can feel it they can sense it they know it so just be authentic and, and tell them straight up what's going on mm-hmm. Because I mean, I've had that mm-hmm. happen and you can't hide <laughs> or not yeah. I can't hide yeah. very well let's put it that way you know it's yeah you can yeah. see it when it's stressful. And so, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. But I think and I think, oh, go ahead. No, it's just, I'm totally agreeing with everything you're saying because I've had a retail, I've had my own mm-hmm. six employees and around the holidays, right now, it gets crazy though, mm-hmm. right now, for most retailers. And um, so it's very stressful as it is. And then you top on the holidays and then down four people when you have everything planned out, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's hard for small retailers because you can only have a certain bank of employees. You know, I I own a cafe, so I know completely. And we've had exactly the same situation this week where it's it's a school half term. So we've had, um, you know, a couple of people who can't work because they've got their kids at home. We've had two employees who have then at short notice there's reasons this week why they can't then work. So we've been short staffed this week as well. And, you know, Chris has had to literally jump in and do what he needs to do out the front. And, you know, I haven't been able to help, unfortunately. Um, I've had my stuff to do. But, you know, as small business owners, you can't have 100 employees on your books. You've only got, you know, your, your eight people, perhaps, that you've got working for you and maybe a couple of other temps. So you've got to have those backup plans. And like you say, Emily, you know, particularly where you've got bookings and things like that, you know, look, is it the end of the world to say to them, look, would you mind if we rescheduled for Monday or Tuesday? I'm going to I'll give you 10 percent off your order to say how sorry we are, you know, but we just can't cope with the volume today. We've had this happen. And do you know what? Customers will understand. And we've had that a couple of times in the cafe. I know that last week that we were really, really busy over a lunchtime and there was a customer that had come in and they had to wait quite a while to get served. And Chris just said to them, I am so sorry. It's 10% off your order. We're so sorry that happened. And they went out and walked out of the cafe, massive smiles on their faces. And you turn it around. And that's what you've got to do. You know, you just make it the best that you can, apologize and just be honest with your customers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Right, my mind. All right. So there's a couple questions here. Um, um, Glenda's asking, which Glenda, look at you. She said she's such an awesome. Glenda's such a great learner. So she she got the question thing right. And um, she said, any tips for keeping the mothership calm during those scary um, storm times? So I'll, um, I'll speak to that first. I think that, um, and, and Darla and Kate, I know this is something that you, you ladies really, really focus on a lot, but I think it's, and it's important, not only just for, um, you know, people who are really wanting to serve other people, like in the coaching setting or, you know, people who are, are trying to create content. I hear you saying all the time, like, what is your why? But I think that's also important. And as a business owner, prior to coming into uh, this type of space where people are really trying to have that laptop lifestyle, my parents have been business owners my entire life. That was not something that we ever talked about, right? That was not a conversation that we had. Although I think that if you ask them, it was a way to provide for their family, right? And doing something that they enjoyed. But really, really digging in and investigating that why. And when you know that and you're able to identify that in, in just a few short, you know, phrases or sentences, and you can almost like a mission or a vision statement does for some people, right? Why are we here? What's the reason that we're doing this every day? I think that's one of the best ways you can kind of keep the mothership calm, right? Because stuff is, if your expectation is that your day is going to go smoothly every single day in business, you have set yourself up for a lifetime of disappointment because let me tell you, it is not going to work out like that, right? That should just does not happen. You should almost, I think you should almost expect things to be shitty. And then when it's, when it doesn't work out, then you're like, yeah, woo right. So I think that's better. But if you can really get connected to, you know, the reason that you're there, because, and, and that's a great, great question, because yesterday, last night, we were sitting at dinner, um, my son's ninth birthday was last night, and my sister was sitting next to me, and she was like, God, you know, another person's sick, she just called in sick for again tomorrow, she's like, I just, I want to throw in the towel, like, I'm just tired of this, right, and so I think it's easy to get, after a week or two or three of this happening over and over again, it can get it can bog you down and it can be really challenging. So I think you have to remember why you're doing it. And, you know, not only for you, but for the people that you're serving, you know, what value are you adding? And although you might not feel like you are when you're, when you're grooming somebody's pet, like these people, this is their livelihood, right? Their pets are their people. Their pets are their children. Their pets are a part of their family. And so it's no different than taking care of someone's child in so many ways. Like it's really important. So whatever your industry, whatever your business, you know, really investigate your why. And I think that can help you calm the the storm, you know, or the feelings that you have when those things come up. Yes, I totally agree. So thanks everybody for joining us. We're talking about what scares you in your business and in your life. You know, things thinking about, you know, are you afraid of success and failure? And we had a couple of things happen literally right before the show. So Emily um, is here via her car because her <laughs> sister is in need to, for help at her, um, at her, um, dog, her pet salon. And so she's literally trying to take care of it on her own because most of her staff is not there because they're sick. They're having problems. All kinds of things are happening. So, so a couple of the questions that people are talking about is, you know, you know, how do you how do you deal with the, you know, when you're having the storm? And I totally agree with what Emily's saying. When you when you go back to the core of why are you doing what you do, um, then it will help center you. And it has nothing to do with your business. And I mm -hmm. teach this. You guys know this. So it has really has nothing to do with your business. It's about you and what's most important to you. And then finding out what your purpose is. And then if your purpose is, you know, um, you know, dealing with what your purpose is will help you to keep focused and centered so that you know what really is the most important. And then I mean, I've had that happen where my business was going down and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't work any harder. I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't physically do it. My hair was falling out. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. Blah, blah, blah. But and it was all happening during that, you know, um, after... Um, we went to war, you know, during the, when they said the recession hit, my business felt it three months prior. And so mm -hmm. it was killing me literally. And I was letting it. So you have to go back to your core. So my purpose, what, what's most important to me is my family. And, and, and I know I had to be, I had to be healthy for my family and that was no longer healthy for me. So 
hope that that helps. Yeah. <laughs> and I've just, I'm just going to say, you know what? There's only so much that you can do. And I totally get it. It's so hard. You've got two sides of this, basically. You've got a business where you've got employees and your employees have let you down for various reasons. You know, that may not be their fault, but whether they're sick or something has happened or what have you, at the end of the day, they've then let you down by not being able to work that shift or whatever that is. You've got that side of things. And then you've got the entrepreneurs that are solopreneurs and we're working in our businesses on our own and we're doing everything. And I think that in both those situations, you've got to realize that you can only do what you can do. And I always think that honesty is the best policy. So, you know, like we said, with, um, you know, customers and with bricks and mortar businesses and when you've got staff that are off sick and things like that, do you know what? You just have to be honest with your customers, you know, say, you know, I'm really sorry. It's a little bit of a longer wait today because, you know, we're a few staff down. Let them know what's going on. You know, people will understand. People are understanding like that. It's out of your hands. But also try and have a backup plan if you can. You know, can you get um, a temp agency that's on the phone that you can phone up and get some extra staff on those occasions where you can't use your normal staff? Things like that and having a backup plan is really, really good. When you're an entrepreneur in your business on your own, it, it, it's it's so difficult because you are literally one person. There's 24 hours in a day. You cannot work 24 hours a day because you will kill yourself. It just doesn't work. And, you know, actually, I've really felt this this week. I've had, um, you know, it's a very good problem to have, but I've been so busy this week with client work. I have not had a chance to stop. I, I just haven't had a chance to stop. And, I was saying to Chris the other day, this is, Chris is my boyfriend. I got a little bit snappy with him at one point because I was like, no, just stop. I've got so much to do. Just don't talk to me. I can't, I can't cope with it. And I kind of thought about it later on and I was like, okay, that's not a good way to handle it. And, you know, like he said to me, you can only do what you can do. And do you know what? I sat there at, by the end of the day and I just said, do you know what? People are going to have to wait. It's all just going to have to wait. And it's my own fault because I've scheduled it in badly. So that's the other thing to look at is how you're scheduling your work. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm just going to have to say to people, mm. you're going to have to give me a few more days. I've been so busy. I'm really sorry. I am working on that project for you, but you're going to have to give me a few more days. And do you know what? At the end of the day, there is nothing else I can do. I'm working as hard as I can. Um, and they're just going to have to wait at the end of the day. So, yeah, if my clients are on at the moment, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take me a few more days to get through things. But, um, you know, you, you've got to do what you've got to do. You can't kill yourself doing it. So just let it go. And it's almost that it's that keep calm and carry on, isn't it? Keep working through one step at a time. Get one job done, then the next job, then the next job. And eventually you'll get to the end of that to do it. Right, right. Totally agree. Well, ladies, I have to actually hop off and head in. So thanks for letting me Thank hop on for just a few minutes. And I'll see you guys next week. Look, have fun. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Happy, have a great Halloween, babe. <laughs> thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let M's, M's out. And so if, if anyone wants to, would like to join us, Kate, are you okay with that? If someone joins No, I don't want anyone else to join. <laughs> I made you know, my shirt. I wore this. I can't find my freaking earrings. I, I but I've got. Them. Them. I was looking to mine. I've got. I'm sure I've got some little bat ones or something, but I couldn't find them. So sorry, I'm not Halloweened up. But you're looking gorgeous. That's okay. Well, you know, this is. I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just wear. It. I thought it might be a little too loud. Oh, it's it's gorgeous. It's good. And by the way, I was joking. People, feel free to join. Please do. <laughs> yeah, it's my um, weird sense of humor. Sorry. No, you're fine. So, um, Jed, if you want to come in, thanks for joining us. I think um, um, Glenda Glenda has a question. What about the phenomenon of fear of success? Yes. And so someone else had mentioned that, too. So if you have a question and you'd like to hop in, this is a great time to talk about. You know, let's talk about your, your fear of failure, fear of success. We all have it. So let's talk about it and see if we can help each other out. So you know, if somebody would like to hop in, if they've got either a, they want to they want to elaborate on their question or they want to um, talk about what they what they're finding that's working for them, you know, to deal with the fear of success or fear of failure, then the seat is open. 
<laughs> managing growth. That's an important one too, um, favor dome. So if you want to, um, if you guys want to hop in, the seat's there. So I'm going to let you guys come in if you want to. Just make sure that your mic is working pretty well and you've got pretty good Wi-Fi. A lot of times I have to like plug my Ethernet cable in, just FYI. So so let's talk about that, Kate. You know, talking about, you know, are you afraid of success? Are you afraid of, of fail, failure? I have to say trying to create the balance. Um, that's something I think I'm constantly working on constantly <laughs> working on. I feel like I, I created some 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 semblance of balance because I I literally forced myself to put in my calendar to take a break every 90 days. And that's something that I, I, I use as my 90 day reset. I just got off of one. So that just refills my well to help keep me balanced. And so that would be something I would highly suggest to everyone here because I was working on empty for over a year and a half when I had my retail location, my retail show or um, storefront. And it was, um, it was hard and I learned the hard way. And so, and the other thing is too, is that talking about failure, um, I felt like a complete failure when I had to shut down that shop. I, I felt like I had, you know, I was, I everything, all my dreams were wrapped up into that. I think this was going to help put my kids through college. All that was there. And I felt like I was failing. And so I can just now talk about it like five years later. It took a while. <laughs> it took a while for me to be able to share. But, um, but because of that, now I'm in a better place because I've learned. I've learned to work smarter instead of harder. I've learned not to, not to that if I, if I can do that and I failed at that, then I'll go, I can go a little bit bigger, right? I can be a little bit, be a little bit more, um, um, you know, not, and things aren't as yeah. scary when you had those kind of failures. And so, and it's really not a failure. It was an experience and I've learned from yes. it. Yes. Oh, do you know what, Dala? That, this is exactly the thing that I was going to say. So I, I was reading something the other day and I can't remember where it was or who it was or, or whatever it was, but it was basically saying that if you cannot you cannot build a business without having um was it i oh, was it without having failures because without failures you don't learn what doesn't work in order to learn what does work um and the only time you actually fail is when you stop trying that's the only time yes. you completely fail is when you stop trying okay everything else is a learning experience so if we look at um uh, who is uh, my mind has gone blank who is the guy who invented the light bulb I can't remember what his name was. Edison. Edison. Thomas no, Edison. No, no, no. Light bulb moment. Um, <laughs> so when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, he did however many attempts it was. And it was literally, I think it was like, you know, like a thousand attempts or something to create it and didn't create the light bulb. And then that one time he created it and made it work. They weren't failures. They were learnings to get him to the point where it actually works. So I think that that is a really key thing. And again, it's like we were talking, um, I think it was last week, about that word expert and the feelings that we all portray onto that. And I think it's the same with failure. Mm -hmm. There are no failures. It's just learning. You only fail if you stop trying and stop moving forward. Um, but I think that actually that's a key thing. It's the feelings that we put onto it. So, okay, I'm gonna share something really, really personal that I really don't share anywhere because it is very, very personal. Um, but basically when I was at school, I was bullied a lot. So for me, that was, and you know, it's when you're a teenager, that's where you're supposed to learn how to deal with things. And, you know, I think for me, I never learned how to deal with things because I was bullied so badly. Um, and it really knocked my confidence. So for me, the issue is self-confidence and how I feel about things. And it's the perception that I put onto that, you know? So if I do something wrong, or if I'm late delivering something to a client, or, and by the way, when I say, wrong there is never a wrong and that's something that I'm learning as well again it's different ways of looking at things or you know you're trying something you know Thomas Edison didn't do it wrong when he was inventing the light bulb he had learnings from that um but I think that it's how you feel about things and how you deal with things and I know that my past experiences in life have definitely knocked that and shaped that and you know I was I was in counseling for a very long time um to get to this point where I'd even be able to talk about all of this the same as you Darla you know you have to go through things and then get to a point where you can talk about it um but I'm okay with kind of talking about that now but for me it still impacts me and how I feel about things so for example I was on a webinar once 
and I was listening to this guy's webinar and he's quite a prominent guy in the email marketing industry in the UK, okay? And I'd asked a question based on something that he had said specifically. Now, I didn't agree with what he'd said in his webinar, which is why I'd asked a question about it. Oh my goodness, right? He came to my question and he ripped me apart. Like I am talking, he got on the webinar and said, oh, we've got this question. Oh my God, that is such a stupid question. That's just a ridiculous question. How can you even ask that question? And you sit there and you're like, oh my goodness. What are you doing? You're just going to panic mode, you know? And it's that for me, I had failed because he thought badly of me and it was how he was thinking of me. And, and to be honest with you, I don't even think he knew it was me. You know, I think it was like an anonymous question that came up. So I don't think it was linked to me because about six months later, he wanted to meet up with me actually. So completely different thing. And yeah, and Diana is right. There are no stupid questions, but actually it was how this guy had dealt with it and, you know, but he'd made me feel really bad. He'd made me feel like a failure. Whereas I actually realized that, no, 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 actually how he dealt with that situation was completely wrong. You should never, ever, ever berate somebody like that, especially in a public forum like that. You should never berate somebody for asking a question. You know, if somebody asks us what color is the sky and, you know, well, they say the sky is blue and we go, oh my God, that's ridiculous. How could you say that? It's not, it's this, this and this, you know, Right. There are no right. stupid questions, but it's how we feel about things and our previous experiences and what our head is telling us. That's where the fear comes from. Um, and I think that, you know, that is such a big thing. It's us, how we deal with things. Um, we, we've got to learn how to deal with things properly and calm ourselves down and go, no, OK, hang on a minute. You know, and this whole thing of failure, what is failure? It's what we think it is in our head. So there you go. There's my little story. Absolutely. So what? So if you, if anybody, uh, Diana has a question. If you would like to join us in, if you have a question you want to ask us, and let's all talk about the question, then please feel free to hop in the in the open seat. I know that there's been some people that have tried to come in and, and then left. So I just wanted to make sure that. Um, so Steve, okay. So Steve and Diana, I'm gonna go ahead and let them both yeah. in. And I love what I love what Glenda's saying about feeling vulnerable can affect our definition of success or failure, and it's our definition of those words. So yeah, again, it's all Absolutely. about those words. So hi Steve, hi Diana. Hello there, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So do you, so Steve, um, do you have a question or a thought on talking about um, the fear of success or failure or creating balance? You got any? great ideas for that I, yes i'm it's a thought i'm very balanced i'm afraid of both but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Love i'm it. not i'm not letting it put me off so um it's the thing about me. fear That's of success it, it, i'll tell you my fear of success um is that the the weaknesses that i have will get found out but um i'm just going to encourage people i've, I've lived a few years now I uh, wish I'd lived a few less, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, but anyway, it's happened. It's too late. Um, so, you know, as you get older, I think you just think, does it really matter when you're younger? You, you think, I don't know. I, I blame films. Films taught us we had to be perfect. No one's perfect. Come on. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree, Steve. And um, yeah, I, I could not agree more. I think that the whole society is built around you have to be perfect. You have to be the perfect person. You can't have any weaknesses. And you know what? No one knows everything. Not even the most successful people, you know, who are out there who've made millions and millions and millions of you know dollars or what have you. Even they don't know everything. And yet they will be the first to say that. So I think we've got to take our egos out of it a little bit, haven't we? Yeah, and if you yes. don't make a lot of money in your life, is that a failure? Yeah. No. I mean, no. It's your definition of success yeah. is what I think. It's whatever you think. You know, If somebody's definition of success is I want to make six figures or seven figures, then okay. But that's not for everybody. And I have to say, your you know, that's not, it's your thoughts. Yeah. So I have, yeah. I have a little piece of wisdom to share. I've just realized I failed to shave today and I'm feeling a bit ashamed. <laughs> Oh, you're looking gorgeous. Oh, bless you. <laughs> so um, here, here, this is a, something that um, kind of spurs me on. So I've I've worked in marketing uh, for periods of my life. Right now I'm animating and I'm going back to marketing later. But anyway, if you look at things from a marketing point of view, you see uh, you get a response rate. Yeah. 
And um, a 1% sales from um, click to sales response rate is not bad. That's 1%. So that's 99 failures. But in the marketing world, that's, yeah, that's um, seen as a success. So how about looking at life like that? Exactly. 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 And that, I think it, it's all in your mindset, right? It is all in your mindset. Totally agree. Totally agree. And, you know, it's fear of being judged by other people, mm -hmm. isn't it? For, well, for me, it is definitely. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I, I judge myself as a failure if other people think, oh, you know, what's she doing? But, you know, look at the most successful Hollywood movie stars. You know, for every 10 people that they've got going, yeah, you're brilliant. There's one person <laughs> going, oh, my goodness, you're awful. Your hair's awful. Or you look awful. Mm -hmm. Or I hate your acting. Or, you know, you can't please everyone. And as human beings, we've got to remember that. And that is so difficult it really is it is yeah before i forget this thought and hi diana hi. so glad you get to come in with us sweetie so before i forget this thought and i want to have diana talk a little bit too and share with us her thoughts is i've read a book and i know i've mentioned this before in a couple of blabs kate's probably heard me a few times it's a book it's called by um don miguel ruiz i don't know if anybody in the audience has heard of it but it's called the four agreements and one of the agreements is not to take anything personally and that's very very hard to yeah. do very <laughs> but it's something that you have to keep in mind that it really has nothing to do with you whatever they're saying like that mean man on the webinar it is a reflection of whatever is going on in their world yeah. it has nothing to do with yeah. you so and that's hard to do because we let our ego get in the way <laughs> totally agree but i absolutely love steve's point about you know like the statistics and in marketing one or two percent conversion rate is actually really really good and like you say 98 99 percent then haven't converted yeah. so does that make you a failure no, not at all. But it's, and it's all. but again, that's in terms of what other people see and what other people perceive. And you know, the average is always going to be better, and there's always going to be worse than that. To get an average, that's how it works. Yeah, so I really works. love that example, Steve. Good. Well, yeah, great example. I'm going to succeed in shaving now, and I shall be listening to you in the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Steve. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Diana. How are you, sweetie? I am wonderful. Wonderful. How are you? Oh, we're good. We're good. It's Friday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I asked that question because for many years, that was my problem. Um, I have been a serial entrepreneur, I believe, all my life. I think it's in my DNA. And someone actually told me it's in your DNA. You can't do uh -huh. anything else. But there it is. <laughs> Props for that. <laughs> and, and when you try and when you try, you always come back to, you know, doing something on your own. So I tried for many years to be, um, I guess, like everybody else and work a job and try to do that because that's what was expected of me. But but when I would venture out and I would start my own business and I've done that several times, once I would get to a level of success to where I needed to hire people because it was too much for just me or I had so many calls like um, Kate was saying, I would have so many appointments and so many calls that it started to become overwhelming. I, and I had to, you know, set more, set, really kind of raise my rates because I felt like if I was getting that many people, I either wasn't charging enough or there really was a market for what I was doing. But I would get so scared of so many people depending on me for things because I've always been mainly in business consulting I've all, because everybody knows me for that. I've done um, event marketing basically my whole my whole life. So I've always helped entrepreneurs with with marketing their business, marketing their concepts and building their business to the next level, whether I was in it or not. I could have a full time job. And if somebody and if somebody knew somebody I worked with, they would call me and say, hey, can you help such and such? She doesn't have money like that, but she's trying to get to the next level, you know, right. and I realized I I was afraid of success. That's really what was stopping me. Every time I would get to that certain point, it was just be like, oh, my God, if I hire somebody, that means their house note is dependent on me their family their food everything is dependent on me so i finally got to the point in my life where now i got my business started back up and i'm at the point where you know what it doesn't matter i'm just going to pray on it 
and, and keep it moving. But, you know, I know I can't be the only person with that problem that had that problem. And I mean, I wasted so much time with that issue. I probably could have been had my business to the level that it is now and even bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. Well, that that is the fear of success, isn't it? Because when you're successful, you then employ other people and then they depend on you. But again, if you look at the biggest, biggest companies out there, and then you look and you see on the news, like when we went into the recession, they had to make thousands of people redundant. Exactly. You know what? That's just business. That happens sometimes. And I'm sure that the bosses of those companies felt awful about it, but there was nothing they could do. They tried as hard as they could. They don't want to make people redundant. They don't want their businesses, you know, to not succeed and not make money. But unfortunately, sometimes it happens. And again, sometimes it may not even be in your control, but because you've got that responsibility for other people, which is what comes with success, mm -hmm. that is such a scary thing. Exactly. Yeah, it is. I totally agree with what you're saying. And, and then some of it's just overcoming that and just knowing, because I know for me, it was double, it was a double edged sword because people would say, oh, well, you've had so much success. You have, you know, between, I would have between four and six people that would work with me. It work work. I say work with me. It's a team effort. Um, and then I literally, I thought about this the other day. I was talking to my, I was with my mom who worked with me and I paid her and um, and she and I had we had two women that would come in and just volunteer because they just wanted to be with us and they just wanted to be around us and in the experience of, of, of working with us and and I, I so appreciated every one of them so I had that success and people think wow you're successful because you have this team and you you are you know your your product goes everywhere and you're, you're doing wholesale and all this other stuff and that was wonderful but that comes with pressure Right. And it comes with responsibility. And because, and then I felt when I was feeling things happen and turn because of the economy, it was out of my control. I can't help what was happening there. So but then I felt like, you know, I was letting them down. So I was failing my family because I was trying to support them to make sure because I knew that they were relying on the income they were receiving from me. So I kept going and I shouldn't have. So live and learn. That was a big learning experience. <laughs> so it's time. It's knowing when to keep going, and I think going with your gut, and knowing when to stop. Yeah. When it's when it's when you can no longer go through that door. When that when that is completely done, and you finish that, and you need to move on into a different direction. But you know, I applaud you for keep going and for coming on here with us, and and just know, Diana, you are so not alone. We're all in the same boat. It's one of the reasons why I love Blab. <laughs> well, yeah, I've, I've because, learned that now. Right? Actually, being on being on Blab and Periscope, that I'm not the only one. And I think too, um, when I decided to get back into my business around April or May, is around the time Blab and Periscope came out. So it was like a godsend because now I feel like I'm so not alone. You know, usually when you're an entrepreneur and you're a startup, you spend so much time by yourself building the structure of your business. So you don't yes. you don't have those conversations with people and you and they don't you don't have anybody to turn to to let them know how you're feeling. And hey, is did you feel this way as well? But now I've had that and it's, it's motivated me every day to get up. And, and while I'm working on other things, I might turn on Blab and I'll be working. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's why my page kept freezing up, actually, because I was putting some more stuff on my website. <laughs> And I had that page up, so I had to take that down because I think it was taking up too much of my bandwidth. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's, but yeah. you know, if I didn't have this outlet, I wonder would I still be at that same place, you know? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. I guess I think I would look at this as, um, as gra being grateful because I am very grateful for Blab. I'm very grateful for Periscope. And I will tell you that because of live streaming, um, I have met some amazing people and I've also been able to take those experiences and in, in friendships and build on them. And I think that's a wonderful thing. So I look at it as, as, um, as a nugget of gratitude and to know that, that, um, that, you know, just knowing that it's not, um, that you're not by yourself, that there's so many people here and then you get to get to meet those, get to meet other people. That's for me is what are the, what it's about too, is you're sharing who you are. You're being authentic. And I, I've met so many people here that are very authentic and very willing to help. Yes. Very and that well. has been so great for me too, because you have access to people that you otherwise wouldn't have had access yeah. to. No, so where do you live, Diana? Where where's home? See, for you? this is the thing too about that. Um, I've moved around a lot, and 
before okay. I live in Jackson, Mississippi now. And um, I'm originally from Macomb, Mississippi, but I moved back to Mississippi because I felt like the business I started is actually a movement. And um, it's called the superhero, the superhero solution movement. And that's superhuman entrepreneurs revolutionizing opportunities. And, oh, wow. and, and what we do is we try to help businesses kind of, you know, and startup um, aspiring mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. I really wanted to build it here in my home state, because if you know anything about the U.S., Mississippi is at the bottom of the totem pole for everything. So it was really important to me to bring something here that would be innovative and that would kind of connect us to the rest of the world. And I, I try to get people to think now, no matter where you're located, we have a global opportunity through things like Blab and Periscope and the Internet. You, you're you're really not just. Um, I, I guess you could say localized. You're, you're not limited by your location. That's how I want to put it. No, no you're not limited. I, and I applaud you for that. That is, uh, um, and I, you know, I, I've been to Mississippi. It's a beautiful state. It's a beautiful Thank state. You. It is. Um, <laughs> I live in the Midwest and it takes a little while for things to happen here too. So I live in Ohio. And so it, it, everybody teases that it's about five years behind New York and LA. (laughs) And it's true. They they say Mississippi is like 20 years behind. I have have (laughs) arguments here with people trying to get them to just get something so simple as a website. I, I constantly tell folks, people don't use the yellow pages. They Google you. (laughs) <laughs> they Google. They're, exactly. they're looking for you through Google. <laughs> and that's something else, fear of technology, yep. fear of change. I mean, those are all fear, very real, real fears that people have, right? Yep. So, I mean, we all deal with it. I mean, I know I have clients that um, I adore and, and, I, and, I, and people that I talk to that you you just like okay you don't have a website or you don't you're only on Facebook you can't use your Facebook as your website <laughs> so little things like that. yeah like Glenda said um, if they're scared of Google they're definitely going to be scared of Blab so this is <laughs> right <laughs> very true girlfriend so Glenda is afraid of and she told me she was being very honest with me she's one of my clients and she's a dear friend and she's She's an she's an amazing person, and she loves to create um, do creative events and create um, what she calls creative communion within the creative industry. Oh, and it. she's amazing at what she does. And so I was blessed to be able to work with her on, on her brand. And so she she t- shared with me that she was afraid to get on video and to, to Periscope. So and so we're gonna we're gonna take her from Periscope and go jump right in the deep end, and she's gonna do a blab with me on Monday. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, good girl. Girl. I know. So you guys give me some props. Come over and join us and give you know give give Glenda lots I of sure love. I will. I sure will. <laughs> well, that, yeah, because it's a big fear. It's a big fear. <laughs> that was the only question I had, and I definitely would do that. Matter of fact, I will follow you. So when you put up the schedule, it'll it'll send me a message over. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for following. I'm gonna follow you back, Diana. It was so great to meet you. Great to meet you too. Good luck with. Doing. If you need any help, you know I can. I'm very happy to help you with you getting your your visual presence online and knowing what your purpose is and and knowing who your ideal client is. And Miss Kate is amazing at anything email marketing related. She she can help set you up. Okay, <laughs> so. okay. Well, I tell you what, yeah. I definitely will be letting you know because um I'm going to be on Blab um very heavily starting tomorrow because I'm um, pushing. I have a whole week of events that I'm doing during entrepreneurship, global entrepreneurship week. I've been a partner with them for the last three years and I have um, four local boot camps that I'm doing and I have um, two virtual events that I'm doing. So especially I may, you know what, I'm, I'm going to get in contact with you on Twitter because i um, yeah, well, I'm happy to share it. I'm sure Kate will too. So yeah, connect with okay. us on Twitter. Thank you, Steve. Y'all have a great day. Yes. You too, babe. Have Take care. Have a great day. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was awesome. 
So um, thanks for joining us, guys. I see that um, Sci-Fi Funk is in the house, and Miss Glenda's rocking it over there in the comments section. And Mark, Mark just joined us. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Um, so if anybody has any other questions or thoughts, it's, we got about ten more minutes. I'm going to really keep this to an hour because I know we're both Kate and I are just both crazy busy. We're trying to get stuff done, and uh, you know, and trying to keep that balance. You know, I'm I have a, a, a daughter who will be 16 in a few days, and she is. So I'm trying to like not work so hard so I can spend some time for her and help her for her party, which is, you know, tomorrow night. Yay me. <laughs> oh my goodness, 16 or is it at your house, Darla? Uh-huh. So half my house is decorated and the other half is a mess. So do you have so a fear of the 16-year-olds trashing your house tomorrow night? <laughs> <laughs> Third, so I'm kind of yeah, not a big deal. But she's um she's my big planner. So and I was you know I was a little fearful for her, thinking okay, are her friends gonna come and all that stuff. But um she's it's gonna be a good turnout. So I'm excited for. Her. But yes, so oh so Diana says she he, she has a, a 17 year old boy. So yeah, so you know they and to me that's what it's all about. It's why I do what I do. So. I love I love Glenda's question. A fear of asking for help. Yes, because again, we all think that we should know everything and no one can know everything. You've got to ask for help. You've got to go and get expert help in areas that you're not sure about. And again, think about the big businesses. Well, they're big businesses because they've employed people to do certain jobs. Not one person can do and know and be an expert at everything. You have to, as you grow your business and get more successful, um, you've got mm -hmm. to employ people to do things that you're not strong at. You employ people to cover the things that you do not have the strengths in, and that's how you build a good business. Absolutely. Totally can't agree with Kate any more than what she just said. Everything she just said is absolutely on, on par. <laughs> it is. And, it, and it's hard to do that. Sometimes you feel like you can do it all. I know when I first started in the online space, I think, well, I don't need to outsource. I can do that. I am not, I know where my strengths are. And I know my weaknesses are now. And I admit that. And so, so for me, it's like, I know that I need help you know, once you get to certain levels to get to the next level, you need help. So I've hired coaches. I have, um, I've taken courses. In fact, that's how Kate and I met is in an online course um, that we, we, we both put, you know, invested several hundred dollars in and you know and that's how you learn. But a lot of times you're learning and you, you're meeting these amazing people along the way. Yeah. So, and then the other thing is, is that, um, you get to certain points in your in your life or your career where you're like, okay, I need to, I need to, in order to get to this next level, I'm going to have to get some other people to help me. Yeah. And so I've had to, I've hired VAs, and I that's really helped me a lot. So I'm pretty much a solopreneur, but I am blessed to have some amazing people around me. I consider Kate one of them. Africa and Emily are, you know, these are my girls. So surrounding yourself around amazing entrepreneurs that are only going to lift you higher is another great tool to help create that success and balance in your life. Yeah. Oh, so key because, you know, look, as entrepreneurs, you just get started in your business. Chances are that money's tight, right? So you probably right. can't afford to outsource and get all these other people in. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that when you do have the money there, definitely that's the route to go. But if not, then you have to invest in yourself if that's not you know money wise you know what that's what google is invented for right to give you access to lots of different information so go out there and find that information there is a lot of free information out there to get you started and yes at some point you do need to invest money as well to take you to that next level but as entrepreneurs just getting started learn you know just soak it all in and learn but implement there's no point in learning if you don't implement anything um and i am really really sort of big on absolutely you know the relationship that you and i have darla you know i know that i had a problem a couple of weeks ago and my first thought was to get on the call with you and say what do i do here and you'd had experience of it before and you advised me um and i also went into a couple of facebook groups that i'm in and said guys help me i don't know what to do in this situation and they all came back and they gave me advice so getting advice from other people who understand what you're doing who are entrepreneurs as well you know in what we're talking about here that is so key because you know if i went and asked my mum for example i mean you know my mum works really hard and everything but she doesn't um, actually no okay my mum's a bad example because she has had her own business before but if i went and asked let's say i don't know my cousin or something that hasn't ever mm -hmm. had their own business 
they wouldn't understand it from that point of view. So having people who are looking at it from that same point of view um, as you're coming from and getting that help is really, really important. Very, very important. I totally agree with whatever you're saying. And that's, and that's why I think, you know, somebody mentioned that's why they've learned so much in the last month of just being on Blab. Sci-Fi sci -fi Funk said that. And I totally agree. Um, Sci-Fi Funk is Steve who was on the line with us. Sorry, sorry, Steve. I should go up here and look up here. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm just looking at the comments. But it's true. I mean, you you learn a lot, and then you you start to get to know some of the people like that are like us. And there's a lot of us. I feel like I fit here because I've found my friends online, and I'm more. I'm because I'm more open, and I'm willing. I'm very willing to help other people if they need help with anything. Um, and you find that other people are the, very much the same way. And I think that makes a big difference is putting yourself out there and just because that's how you're going to know. You know, we're like people like you know, people on Blab and people that are on you know on on all the other social medias and stuff too. It's about being social too, right? Yeah. But um. I think um, achieving that, you know, achieving that balance and everything you were just saying, Miss Kate, is is I totally agree with. Totally agree with you. Yeah, but you know what? I've got to be honest. That even though we do these weekly blabs and everything, I haven't actually been on blab other than with you, Darla. So I'm actually, this this platform actually scares me because other than coming on with you, and to be honest with you, I still struggle to try and join our blabs every Friday because I forget what the link is and I have to go onto your Twitter, Darla, and then click on it. For so, you know, I'm still scared of this platform. I'm, I'm fine on video, but the actual workings of the platform, I still haven't mm -hmm. sort of explored it and, and learned it yet. So that's something mm -hmm. that I need to do that I haven't actually done yet. And look, see, look, another thing, this is the thing about live video, isn't it? My phones are going off all over the place now. So yeah. I apologize for all that noise in the background. No, <laughs> but you know what, what you just said is something is really important. And I think it's about being authentic. And you are. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why I love working with you and collaborating, co-collaborating, um, because it's it's about finding those people that you feel that, you know, you can you can truly be yourself with and grow with. Um, and just know that heads up. You can always call me and I will always hop you pop you on with. In fact, I was on one with la last night with um, Kelly O'Brien and we were literally in the test zone because she was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I we were on there and we had 30 people in the, <laughs> in the test zone. <laughs> oh, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, Darla, Darla, we're going to have to jump on a call next week and you're going to have to actually teach me Absolutely. how to use Blab other than just pressing the button to come and join you. <laughs> I'd be happy to because I really, um, I really love it, and it's it's becoming. Um, and I've met so many amazing people here, and just being able to to um, be on the call with other people is just been great. So, so um, yeah, anytime you let me know when you have time because I know you're the busy girl. <laughs> so what are we missing over here in the comments? And I'm trying to see. Thank you for admitting you're scared. Oh, so Glenda says, thank you for admitting you're scared. You know what? I think that's, it's about being authentic and transparent. And I hope that you've, you've all know, known that can, can sense that by Kate and I, um, for sure. So, um, and then Jay says, uh, let's see, it's fine when you are these on these platforms, you're not expected to be perfect, just honest and true. Very true, Jay. That's, that's, that is, and I think that's a, I think that's a, I think that's why people are so gravitating towards them. And once they get on it, it's, I have not met anyone who said, oh my God, I, I don't, well, maybe one or two people that I've said, that have said, I really don't care for Blair. I, most people do. And I think it is about being authentic. That's probably one of the reasons why I enjoy it so much is because it's a very casual platform. If the phone rings or the dogs come in or the cat jumps up on your lap. Which she usually <laughs> does, but she's not around today, so. <laughs> yeah, and mine's laying down by my feet. Oh, he chewed up my shoe. Oh dear. <laughs> there goes the inside of my shoe, <laughs> my puppy. Lovely. Okay. All right. We'll get a new shoe. Okay. So <laughs> what, what are we missing over here? <laughs> the fear of not having shoes because your puppy's chewing. Fear of not having shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so um, I think I think this is probably maybe a good place for us to stop, unless somebody has a question, a burning question that we haven't discussed or or talked about. So, Kate, if you want to go ahead and put your URL, so people would like to to join your community or get to know what you do, I think this is that would be great. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Um, We'd love for you guys to join us over on Twitter or join us. Um, there's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not just my phone then. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Exactly, exactly. So it's always something, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. There's always something else going on, isn't there? As entrepreneurs, yeah. that's the thing. You know, our phones are ringing, and we've got to deal with all of this. So. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So, so you guys, thanks for joining us here and, and um, working with us. I, I have to say, I was really hoping that, that Africa could join us and that I didn't really get to talk much about that, but she had a very scary personal thing happen. It's flooding in Texas since she's in Texas. And so she, um, so she literally had somebody come and save her out of her car because her car was completely filled up with water within seconds. And that's a very scary thing. Yeah. And so I'm just grateful that the man came and and got her and brought her safely home so so um but i'm sure that you know uh, we'll have the rest of us back here next week and that'll be awesome and um i know very scary jay it was very scary so pray for all the people that are in texas because it sounds like they are really having some big issues down there so i'm just very grateful that she's home and she's safe and right now she's trying to deal with trying to get her family back and get her kids back home safely and uh so yeah so keep that in your thoughts and prayers and you guys have an awesome awesome weekend and um great holiday a great halloween boo fest <laughs> you got anything planned miss kate uh i'm going out for lunch with my family tomorrow um so i've also my big announcement is that i am now four and a half weeks without smoking i quit smoking four and a half weeks ago so this is my this is my um celebration lunch tomorrow <laughs> happy dance for you i'm doing a little blab dance for you <laughs> I'm so proud of you, honey. You. I'm so proud of you. I mean, I hope you t I hope you see that every time you post, I'm like, yay, Kate. I am. No, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, yeah, and no, I thank you for that support. But, yeah, it's not been easy. So anyone that is thinking about giving up smoking um, or is scared of giving up smoking, go do it. <laughs> Set your mind to it and do it. I'm four and a half weeks in now, and I never thought that I'd be able to do it. So, uh, yeah, you just got to face your fears and do it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great way to end this. Face your fears and that because that's how you're going to achieve the success that's right for you. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But thank yeah. you so much for having me on again, Dala. Honey, it's, it's a it's a team effort. I couldn't I can't do it without you. And so this has been amazing. Thanks for the for people who are joining us. If you want, we're getting ready to end the blab because Kate and I have got a bazillion things going on right now. And so we're going to have to end the, the blab. And so you can catch the replay. We'd love for you to join us and follow us here and follow us over on Twitter if you have any questions. Yeah. And be sure to come over to our um, to our sites. And that way you'll get to know a little bit more about us. Join us on our next blab, which is next week, where we're talking about the whole month is going to be about about um, gratitude. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you've got some some thoughts or ideas or you got some questions, and be sure and let us know. And we will see you next Friday. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining.